Well, good evening, everyone. I'm glad to be back with you tonight. And uh, looking forward to sharing with you another method or tool to be able to share the gospel. And so we'll get everybody logged on here. We'll give them a couple minutes to do that. And then we'll get started with our time tonight, our study. Look forward to sharing with you in that today. Good evening, Miss Judy and Mr. Tack. Glad y'all are on with us tonight. Good evening, Miss Bridget. Good evening, Marchetta. Glad you're with us. We'll give it another minute or so. Let anyone else that's going to uh, sign on here, and uh, we'll get started after that. Hope you've all had a good afternoon, uh, a good restful day. We'll go ahead and get started, and uh, I'll try to recognize anybody else that, uh, that uh, gets logged on and connected with us as we share live tonight. Many of you probably will see this at a later date or later time, and uh, I pray that it's a, a good session for you, a good time as we talk about sharing our faith. And just a reminder that we are doing our Who's Your One emphasis, where we've got one person that we have asked God to lay on our heart to be able to pray for and uh, pray for opportunities to serve and to engage in spiritual conversations and share the gospel with. We've also been doing some training and stuff, and you'll see over right here over my shoulder. Uh, we've talked about the best news last week. Tonight we're going to talk about another uh, tool that we can use called Live This, uh, or it's, you, it's at oneconversation.com. You can go online and look it up. Uh, and it's a, again, it's a condensed version. We're going to revisit it later in the year as well. But we'll finish up our the main emphasis uh, next Sunday morning as far as our who's your one. But we'll continue to keep that before us that we continue to pray because we want to be able to share with that person sometime this year. And so I'll continue to, to point you that direction. We're also in the middle of our uh, Annie Armstrong Easter offering uh, where we're focusing on North American missions. And uh, you can see above my shoulder, I'll get it right in a minute, right over here. I can't do this backwards. Uh, the Mission Moves Forward is our theme. 
or we're focusing on North American mission work uh, and uh, all the money that is given through the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, every bit of that goes to uh, the missions uh, here in the North America, Canada, and throughout the United States. And so I encourage you to give as God leads you. And uh, we'll continue. Our goal is $7,000. We'll continue to promote that throughout the month of March and into April and uh, wrap that up uh, Easter Sunday. So I encourage you to, to be a part of that. And uh, we'll be, um, again, Wednesday night, I'll talk about some evangelistic prayer since we're focusing on prayer this year as well. And uh, on Wednesday nights, I've been talking about prayer and fasting and as we began our Who's Your One, I began to talk about uh, evangelist, our evangelistic prayer life. And so we'll talk about that some more uh, this Wednesday night as we are on Facebook Live at 7 o'clock. and I encourage you to join me there as well. Um, and just notice that Liz, and uh, I've got my finger in front of the camera, uh, Annette, Andy, uh, glad y'all are with us tonight. And uh, good to see y'all. And I uh, hope you have a good night tonight. So as I said, um, we're talking about on Sunday nights about training and some training ideas and some tools and methods to share the gospel. And one of the best methods that we have, and I encourage you to realize that one of the best methods or training for us is to just do it, just to practice sharing your faith. And you can do it with another believer and get used to communicating uh, but just talking to people and having those spiritual conversations are, are important. And by doing that, the more we do that, the more comfortable, the more bold we will be. And so, as I said, we're going to do another, um, talk a little bit, we'll talk through another method. It will be, as I said, a condensed version. And we'll go through and talk some more about this later on in the year. Um, but as I said, it's called Live This. And this morning I gave out uh, a little guideline or outline i should say of this plan and so if you've got that you may want to grab it if you didn't get one and you would like one let me know and i'll make sure you get it and uh of any of the tools that we're we're doing and also this morning I gave out a card that looks like that it says my seven and uh it's one that has been designed to use with this uh with live this and the one conversation to be able to pray for seven people. Now, I know we're focusing on one, uh, but obviously the more God will give us and he'll expose and, and expose us to those that don't know him, that we'll have more and more people that we will be praying for and realize that the battle for somebody's soul is won in our prayer life. God's going to give us the opportunity to share. God's going to grab and lead people to him, draw people to him. We need to be praying and asking God to help us. And as we pray for these people that need to know Jesus, then God will move in our hearts and in their hearts. And so we need to make sure that that is the battle we're fighting is on our knees, uh, talking to the Lord for these people and on behalf of these people, asking him to move in their hearts. And so as we uh, talk about this tonight, I just want you to be encouraged I want you to be comfortable and learn to share your faith, and it should be natural for a believer, and we want to get to the point where we can do that. And so I'm going to pray for us before I do. I just noticed Miss Dorothy Taylor uh, signed on. So, Miss Dorothy, good to see you tonight. I, and i um, um, glad you are able to connect with us and watch tonight. I bet Mr. Horace is probably watching too. So uh, glad you all are with us. Let's pray, and then we'll talk about live this uh, method of sharing the gospel. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for this evening. Thank you for the time we can be together and uh, the beautiful day you've given us. God, you've blessed us so much. God, I pray that tonight as we look at your word, as we talk through a, a, an outline, a way to share your, your story, your message, help us to be faithful, help us to be bold, and help us to share with those around us, those we know, those that we're in contact with, how they can know you as their personal Lord and Savior and have a relationship with you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, as I said, it's a, this is another one. It uses an outline and an acrostic uh, to share the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ, um, you know, is we commonly understand it today that 
there's certain things that we do to understand the gospel. And so tonight we're going to use the word gospel as an acrostic and share five essentials and our five key elements and then one powerful result as we share the gospel. So if you've got a Bible with you, I'd encourage you to turn to Ephesians chapter 2 and I'm going to read verses 1 through 10 and that's going to be our um, our focal passage for this presentation. Now there'll be a lot of other scripture that I'll share with you. Uh, probably won't read it all because it is uh, quite a bit, but if you have uh, the outline here, then uh, all the scripture is pr printed, the references are printed there, so you can look at those on your own. And like I said, if you don't have these resources, let me know and I can get them to you this week. Um, just contact me and I'll make sure you get, your, get those in your hands. But let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 two, through 10, and that will be our passage that we'll look at and use tonight as we talk about uh, live this. And here's what God's word tells us. And you were dead in, a, in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of, our, of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of his, the great love which he loved us, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him. So as we use, and I realize, I just realized the sun's coming through the window, it's a little different when if I lean forward, I've got the sun on my face, so I apologize for that. And uh, but I also apologize for my voice. Hopefully, I won't get to coughing too bad tonight. Uh, the the longer days, though, I just realized it kind of changes when we do our uh, my presentation here tonight. So hopefully, we can get through that without too much of a distraction. But as we think about the gospel and using that as our acrostic, and we think about what God has told us here in Ephesians chapter two through the writings of Paul. <coughs> That uh, number one, or the first thing, the G uh, of the word gospel, it can it stands for God's character. In verse four, it, it emphasizes the full character of God. And when we share the gospel, that's something we need to make sure that people understand that God is a loving and merciful God. Uh, mercy is, basically means that we don't get what we deserve. Um, God is loving and merciful. But at the same time, he is also a just judge. He is going to judge rightly. And so he will not let the guilty go unpunished. So we are all guilty of sin. So his uh, righteousness demands that he judge us accordingly. But he is a loving and merciful God. And you can uh, follow along and read these passages. I'll write them down right now if you want to. But Habakkuk 1.13 it says, you who are of purer eyes than to see evil and cannot look at wrong, why do you idly look at traitors and remain silent when the wicked swallows up the man more righteous than he? And then Jeremiah 31, 3 says, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. God's love is everlasting. And so when we share the gospel and using the gospel as the acrostic, G is God's character. God's loving, merciful, but just. And so we need to share God's character. Secondly, the O is the offense of sin. Uh, and the Bible in that, this passage talks about it in verse 5. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive in Christ. So we were dead in our sin, our trespasses and sin. 
And that is a critical part of the gospel message, that we are sinful. We, we rebelled back with Adam and Eve. It started there and was passed down through all generations that we are sinful and we are rebellious against God and his way. And we must communicate that to people. And it separates, that sin separates us from the holy and merciful God. And so we must have a realization of sin or an understanding of sin. And that gives us the realization of the need for a savior. Uh, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of glory of God. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we, we must communicate that we are dead in our trespasses and sin, and we have a need for a Savior. And so we must understand the offense of sin. That's G-O-S is the sufficiency of Christ. Verses 5 and 6 in our passage from Ephesians 2. Uh, Even it, when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive with together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us in he, with him, in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, Jesus' work on the cross, which we're getting close to Easter, and we're going to celebrate the, uh, the Palm Sunday and his death and burial and resurrection, his resurrection on Easter Sunday, or Resurrection Sunday, that his work on the cross is sufficient, that he has done the work to be able to forgive us our sins because of his work on the cross, nothing that I have done. It is sufficient. He is sufficient. And we must communicate and, and let people know he is either sufficient to save us or he's not. Uh, and we must clearly communicate that. Um, you know, that Christ is not simply an answer, which is what many in our world and our culture today believe, but he is the only answer. <coughs> and so the, our sin separates us from God. And because Christ is sufficient, we don't have to add anything else to the gospel. It, that's it. It's, it's complete. Um, the promise of redemption uh, that he gives us because of his work on the, cro on the cross. Uh, in Isaiah 53, 6 and, and ver verse 6 and verse 11, talk about how we've gone astray. We're like sheep that have gone astray. But that he has come. It's a prophecy that he has come. And, uh, and because of what he has done, um, that we can be saved, we can be righteous. Of course, John 14, 6, which I mentioned this morning, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Those, that's what he said. And so we need to make sure that we are able to communicate that, that God, Christ, Jesus' work on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection are sufficient for our salvation. So that's the G-O-S. P is a personal response. Um, verse 8 and 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not in your own, of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no man may boast. When we think about what God has done, he acted on our behalf. Uh, he had a divine plan in, in eternity past. He had a divine plan to redeem mankind. And, but he, he also placed a responsibility on us that we must hear and believe the gospel. And so that's why it's important for us as believers to share the gospel. Because if, if people don't hear it, then how will they believe? And belief in Christ and the gospel will result in a person turning to God from sin and to worship and serve him. Mark 1.15 says, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. And that's what Jesus said as he started his ministry. Um, Acts 2.38, as Peter and the disciples were preaching on the day of Pentecost, they said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. And, and those go on and on. Uh, different passages, excuse me. Different passages that God gives us. Romans 1.16 I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Um, on in Romans 2, 4, Romans 9 and 10, you know, just many verses talk about um, the personal responsibility that we have 
to respond to the gospel message that has been shared with us. <coughs> and so we must believe, we must confess him as Lord of our life. So that's G-O-S-P. The E is the eternal urgency. Verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The Bible teaches us that eternity is pressing in on us, that there's an urgency about what we do. There's an urgency about our life. Those who do not place their trust in Jesus Christ, as I preached this morning, which it was is not necessarily a popular topic, and a lot of times we don't preach as much about it. Those people who do not place their trust in Christ, those who reject Christ, will perish to an eternal hell separated from God, and that's where they will spend eternity. Those who trust the sufficiency of Christ's sacrifice on the cross will spend eternity with God in heaven. And so that urgency that we've got, we're on a time scale or a time frame. This is not going to go on forever. Uh, that we are drawn and there is, a, you know, for it's appointed for every man to die, as the Hebrew says, and then the judgment. So we've, we've got a certain amount of time on this earth and we don't know exactly what that is. That goes for us or anybody else. So there's an urgency about us uh, sharing the gospel. And, of course, Jesus said, you know, he sent his only son, uh, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And, and so we must be urgent. There must be an urgency about that. You know, we don't know exactly what the future holds. What it, and we've got a limited amount of time on this earth. If God has called you and you've given your life to him, then there's a, a part of your responsibility is to share that with other people. And so there's an urgency about that. Those are the five elements using G-O-S-P-E-L or P-E. And L is that powerful result that we see. And once again, in verse 10 of Ephesians 2, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Uh, one translation or one way to translate that is that we are his masterpiece. He has designed us. Think about that, that uh, of the classics, the, the paintings or the, the sculptors that from times past that are considered uh, the, the masters, the classic. That's kind of what the word is telling us there, that God has created us as he's called us and we have become children and disciples of Christ that he is, we are his masterpiece. We're his beautiful painting, his beautiful work of art. And why did he create us? To do good works. Of course, we know that, <coughs> and we have to remember and communicate that our works don't save us. There's nothing you can do, according to chapter, or verses 8 and 9 of Ephesians 2. There's nothing you or I can do. But we are saved through faith, by grace through faith. But, then we're created to do good works. God has called us and transformed us so that we can do the things and honor him and, and bring glory to his name by doing the things he's designed for us to do. And it says beforehand. Well, what is beforehand? I believe that's in eternity past. I believe he has a plan for your life. And he's put people in your life to be able to share the gospel that nobody else will have the opportunity to, or nobody else will have uh, an effective testimony to them. And so God has given us this great opportunity. Uh, one hears the gospel, they accept him as a Savior and Lord, and the result is a changed life, a, a life that is transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the power of the gospel. It is nothing that, of any man. And the change is dramatic. Of course, the scripture talks about uh, that change. And God has given us that opportunity. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 is one of those verses that tells us, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new cre creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So when we give our life to Christ, he changes us. We're a completely different person, a completely different creation than we were before. And we have the wonderful opportunity of being able to share the gospel with somebody and to be able to see before our eyes God transform that person as he leads them in the power of the gospel, power of the Holy Spirit, change that person. 
And so as we think about sharing the gospel and who's your one, uh, I encourage you to pray for those people. Pray for the one. Uh, I think if God gives you more, <coughs> to, <coughs> excuse me, to be able to pray for your seven. Uh, but I think using these tools, and, and, and once again, there are a lot of different methods, a lot of different tools, and I just want to get in your hands various ways that you can do this um, so that you can be comfortable sharing the gospel with somebody. And I'm going to go back and, and kind of review a little bit and talk about just real briefly uh, some of the things we've talked about. We've talked about using your testimony, your story. Nobody can argue your testimony. God changed you and, and brought you, if you're a follower of Christ, you can tell your story for that relationship you have with God. Um, he has shown us through uh, the Roman road, you know, <coughs> excuse me, a series of five or six verses that you can memorize, that you can share the full gospel message in those verses. Um, we've talked about the covenant of God's love, the little New Testament that's marked up. We've talked about how you can mark your New Testament with the Roman road. Uh, we've talked about, um, well, as we did last week, the best news. Tonight we talked about live this or one conversation. And once again, you can go to oneconversation.com and check out some information there that goes along with this using the gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L, as an acrostic. And so as you pray, as you seek God, uh, ask him for somebody to, to pray for, somebody that you can share with. Somebody that he can use you to change their life. Uh, of course, we know it's his power. It's his work. We are just the messengers. <clears throat> but if we are going to be a disciple, then we are called to be that messenger and be that witness. And so I encourage you to do that. Once again, if you need re the, some of these resources, let me know and I'll make sure and get them to you if you don't have them. Um, but we want, because I want to put things in your hand, I want to put things in your heart that you can use to share the gospel with people who need to hear. And I'm so excited about what God's doing. <coughs> Excuse me, forgive me for my cough. Hopefully in a few weeks that'll be gone. Uh, but we need to be faithful. As I said, there's an urgency because uh, there's we've only got a certain amount of time on this earth. And we need to use it to the best of our ability to serve God, love him, and love people. And one of the ways we love them is telling them about a loving, merciful God that is going to come back and he's going to judge the earth and judge the world. And we want people to go to heaven, not to hell. So I encourage you to share as you get an opportunity this week. Let me pray for you. Father God, again, we come to you. And we thank you for your love, for your presence with us. We thank you for the call that you've placed on our life to share the gospel with a lost and dying world. God, I pray that we would be bold, that we would be faithful, that we would be able to share and use whatever techniques, whatever methods, uh, whatever things you give us to be able to share with those that need to hear about you so that you can change their life <coughs> and bring them to an understanding of salvation and that they need a savior and that you are that savior lord i thank you for those that are watching and those that will watch this later on lord i pray that you bless them give them opportunities to share about you lord we just thank you so much for your presence in our life give us a great week Give us opportunities to uh, touch somebody's life. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining me tonight. And I uh, pray that you've had a good night. And uh, if, uh, as I said, these are just techniques or methods or tools that we can use to share the gospel. But I think one of the best things you can do is just practice, get used to it, get comfortable with sharing the gospel. And then just talk to people about spiritual matters and God will do the rest. God will do the work and draw people to him. And we can trust in that. I pray you have a great week. I'm praying for you. I love you and look forward to seeing you soon. Talk to you later. Bye.